So we've talked a little bit about the Malady Codex and the Malady Workshop here on my DM's Yield Review series. Let's talk now about the Malady Workshop, taking those and applying them in actual adventures. And if you're curious what I'm talking about, stay tuned. All right, welcome back, guys. Here we are on the DMs Guild, taking a look at the Malady Chronicles. This is the same line of people who already created the Malady Codex. I think there's even a sequel to the Malady Codex now, as well as the Malady Workshop. This is kind of a combination by a whole bunch of different people on the DMs Guild. Um, again, the original stuff were written by medical students, and you can see right here, Offers an introduction into the realm of magical diseases written by medical students with a love for tabletop role-playing games. It was inspired by the vast array of diseases. In this book, you'll find nine disease-centric encounters to get you from uh, ranging from levels 1 to 15. A guide to connect them to make them all part of one longer story, sort of mini-campaign. plethora of new monsters and magic items tailored for each adventure. Eight pre-gen level 1 characters full with stats, abilities, and backstory. Beautiful custom art, custom made maps, and handouts to bring to the game. So I'm going to jump in here. We'll take a look at the start. Uh, minor pet peeve right off the bat. We don't have bookmarks or places to jump ahead to different sections. We have to use the table of contents and type in the number. Yes, I know anybody can do that, but it's just a convenience factor that a lot of PDFs have. So I would invest in that in the future. So here we can see our sample characters here on level 8. We have the Malady base equipment on 15. And one thing that I guess I sort of like but I don't like is that each adventure is broken out into the encounter and then a series of appendices for each encounter. Appendix A for each encounter is maps, B is handouts, C is creatures, and D is disease. Sometimes they don't have all of those. Um, or in, see, it says other information here is Appendix E on this one and D on another. Uh, in my mind, the way a book typically works is, you know, you have the appendices at the end. So you'd have an appendix for all of the maps with a dividing page rather than an appendix in each individual adventure. That's just me. I think that just makes sense, you know, flow-wise. But we have our connective piece here for the Malady Chronicles. Um, and how to do different things, a couple different options to kick stuff off, adventure hooks. Um, here's a little bit of the level range breakdown to show you how to run them and where people should be based on that. No reason you couldn't sprinkle in other adventures as well in the meantime to fill any kind of gaps that you see. There are sample characters. We're going to skip through them with a wide variety of races. We have some base malady equipment, um, which is cool. You know, there's like sword cane, some plague doctors masks, and things like that. Um, we have some different plates. We have tissue staining kits, surgeon's tools, a scalpel. You can see there's nothing, I'll be honest, none of these really jumped out at me. I mean, the tincture of the four humors isn't bad. When you drink a potion, it magically cures one disease afflicting you, removing the paralyzed and poison condition. I'm restoring 44 plus 4 hit points. Uh, so it's like a greater healing potion with the benefit that it can remove some conditions. Obviously, you won't be able to use it to remove the paralyzed condition from yourself, but there's no reason someone else could do that. Um, but nothing really jumped out at me when I looked through these, to, like a magic item that really called to me that I feel like I really needed to specifically showcase to you. Um, so I looked through the adventures. There's some pretty cool ones. There's one that deals a lot with mind flayers, which is pretty cool. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to do the purification of Raz Kalak. Kalak? I don't know. Uh, heads up spoilers. Uh, I'm going to be going over what's contained in here. Uh, also, I thought this was really interesting based on the story, uh, because it involves a dragon. But I also like it because it happens to be the shortest one for the point of making a video. So, we've got a little bit of an overview. Basically, a quick rundown of what this is. There's this Oxitorus, this dragon. Uh, he has this special breath weapon, a toxic breath weapon. So he's got his draconic breath weapon, um, but it can inflict you with a disease. No one really knows how he got it. Uh, well, I guess you kind of can learn over time, but 
essentially he's just become a fixture in the kingdom of Minoxia. He's just there and he uses his plague breath to inflict people with a disease that they've dubbed toxic breath after the dragon. And uh, that's kind of just like a norm of the society. So a minor noble named Raz Kalik contracted um, Octotaurus's toxic breath and in a moment of weakness took the dragon up on his offer for a cure. So the dragon has the ability to cure the disease himself, basically with on a whim, and said, I will give you absolute loyalty, but you need to cure the disease. Um, she now regrets her decision and uh, seeks a way to break free. Uh, and a member of the secretive physician circle and personal attendant to her has uncovered that he believes to be the source of the tainted power for the dragon's breath weapon. They also mention uh, the Orange Talon, which is a rebel group. Um, so a rebel group known as Orange Talon, physicians seeking a permanent end to the plague, meet in secret to share their discoveries. They give you a series of adventure hooks, but basically you're going to meet Atokakis. Also, the names are a little rough to say. Not rough, but like Razkalak, Atokakis. I just felt like the names sounded somewhat similar in my head. Um, obviously you can feel free to change them in your own game. Basically, you're going to meet Cacus. That's the point of the adventure hooks and what's going to go on. And they're basically going to say, we are beseeching you to try and find a cure for toxic breath. We have some maps, uh, and we think we can find out an area. We might be able to get some information of where we can find within the nearby swamp how we're going to find this cure. Uh, it came from the Orange Talon, and they have a thicket labeled the Grove of Abiba, and bears the legend Packin's Font. Um, so that is kind of the main piece, and I think there's something about... If I'm right, Packin's Font will be some sort of mushroom growth. You're going to run into a random encounter, a couple of attacks, then you head into the swamp itself, there are a lot of really interesting random encounters, weather tables, and terrain factors that come into effect based on random rolls or whatever you deem as the DM to make the swamp encounter more interesting. Then you're going to eventually find the village of Escadair, which means the furthest point. Uh, and it's basically um, a, a settlement inside the swamp. Um, scattered around a rocky outcropping less than 50 population um and it seems that none of them are afflicted with the disease um so eventually you're going to find the grove of abiba is a blasphemous place hidden within the swamp the center of a grove is a tall ring of papyrus plants 50 feet in diameter from the corpse risen a mushroom stalk the size of an adult humanoid topped by a brilliant purple head from which four long tendrils dangle and dry, uh, drift into the prechestent water Single similar mushrooms dot the entire grove, which has the feel of an unholy place. So this is the interesting part. The grove of Abiba is the location where Oxitorus performed the profane ritual, which gave him the caloric breath. Uh, the ritual involved drinking the water fouled by the coatl's blood and fresh uh, flesh within the boundary of a powerful hollow spell. A coatl is sort of a celestial winged snake creature. Um, after the coatl is killed by a violet fungus. The spell uh, prevents movement or travel using teleportation or by extra-dimensional or interplanar means within 30 feet of the Quattle's body. In addition to the Violet Fungus and the Hollow spell, the Grove has a more fearsome guardian, a Jinny named Binium, once afflicted by toxic, toxic Breath, who again swore allegiance to the dragon to have it cleansed, uh, and some Violet Fungus. So there's a showdown there. Then you basically are going to go try to meet with Raz Kalak. You learn kind of what's been going on, um and then you go and meet with them telling them hey listen this is what we found and basically you find out uh through a series of social encounters that raz kalak does indeed or kalak uh revere this dragon or take the the settlement or the agreement that they came up with seriously and then that becomes a showdown versus raz kalak um basically it says Regardless of the outcome, the party has made an enemy of Oxitoris, which you can exploit to the extent of your desire. Um, 
So let's see. We have a map here, you can see, of the whole lair and the swamp itself. We have a handout, which is sort of a hand-drawn map. We have our two creatures here. They're nothing crazy. Adokakis and Raskalak. They're just two NPCs. And then here's our disease. Oxytorus' toxic breath. The effects of the toxic breath resemble, uh, breath resemble the effects of cholera toxin produced by Vibrio cholerae. A similar toxin is also produced by a type of E. coli. It causes massive water, watery diarrhea. Clinically, it presents with neurological symptoms due to electrolyte deficient or deficit and severe dehydration. So he has this. It says, when he uses his breath weapon, creatures must also succeed on a DC-20 con save or be poisoned. The toxin in the dragon's breath enter the creature's body and the infest, uh, infection is established. So the way I read that is you still get impacted by the damage of the breath weapon and then you are also poisoned on top of it. So you get the double whammy. And that's something really interesting that I hadn't thought of is utilizing these diseases or creating your own disease something along those lines to further tweak an existing feature of a monster to just make it that much more deadly, like taking a breath weapon and then adding a disease factor on top of it, but like still getting hit with a breath weapon. Um, okay, symptoms. All present quickly and extremely severely. Dehydration makes the character feel weak. Every dawn, a creature must make a DC 18 con save or take a D8 poison damage. This damage cannot bring a creature to 0 HP. It also has disadvantage on all ability checks. It's hardly a challenge to diagnose, so that shouldn't be too hard. And what's the cure? The dragon can cure it himself. One must swear absolute loyalty to him. Alternatively, that rogue band of physicians, the Orange Talon, they have discovered a cure, but it'll be about 500 gold to buy it from them. Or if you pledge to their cause, that may help you as well. I think they'll give that to you if you pledge their cause or 500 gold to buy it outright. Um, a single dose of the antidote will reverse the effects of the disease and protect the creature for one month from symptoms. Or, which is another thing I like, if you're proficient with alchemist supplies, herbalism kit, or poisoner's kit, or the medicine skill, you can try to make a check to determine if you can come up with an antidote for the disease. It's a DC 18, so it's pretty hefty. But it would be nice to get a good use for your alchemist supplies or even your medicine check. Um, once on success, they create an antidote similar to the one provided by the Orange Talon. So I really wanted to showcase this one because I thought it was unique to have um, this sort of interesting noble interacting with a dragon because the dragon has a, like a, a disease-spreading breath weapon that can also be used... Um, to control people and get them to pledge loyalty to it in exchange for being cured of just gross, awful, watery diarrhea. Um, I don't know. And I, again, I like the concept of taking an already difficult monster or a monster that could be better or more unique and applying this disease as a factor, like as part of the breath weapon. Uh, obviously, you could do something simple like take a, any kind of humanoid that uses a bow or darts and coat the poison, you know, coat the darts in that poison or with that disease, but it's not the same as it coming from the dragon's breath weapon. So, anyway, guys, let me know what you think of my DM's review of the Malady Codex. Uh, I wanted to keep this one short. I've had a penchant for doing really long videos lately, so I was hoping to keep one relatively short uh, and showcase one full adventure, paraphrasing. But again, there are eight other full adventures in there to check out. It is, I don't think I discussed this at the start. It is $14.95 on the DMs Guild, but you can get it for uh, $14.95 for just the PDF, but you can spend $44.95 to get it in hardcover, or actually as a deal right now, $44.95 to get the PDF and the hardcover for the same price. Um, it's a copper bestseller. It's got nine five-star ratings, so it's clearly worth picking up. It's also 192 pages long, so you're going to get a lot for your $14.95. Let me know what you guys think. Did you pick up a copy of the Malady Codex for your, or I'm sorry, the Malady Chronicles for yourself? If so, are you enjoying it? Have you played any adventures? If not, what's the holdup? Why are you not, maybe diseases aren't your thing, and I get that. Um, anyway, guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and you want to see more of content like this in the future. I also stream every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday evening, and every other Sunday on Twitch. 
So if you want to see live gameplay stuff from things like character building, world building, or just actual gameplay, or sometimes one shots, uh, swing by and uh, check the link in the description to follow our Twitch channel as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.